Okay, Fernando, thank you for joining us. Uh, before we begin, uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, uh, what you do, so that we have a, a sense of uh, where you're where you're coming from. Okay, thank you, Mara. Thank you for for um, yeah for, for chatting about this and and uh, getting to know ourselves a little bit better, and for your uh, beautiful and inspiring work about the server spinal liquid which actually it was the reason why i connect you i connect with you and uh, so my background is um, is uh, from sports science i started doing uh, two years of sports science and then i moved to uh, physical therapy um, and when i finished physical therapy normally i'm from spain um, most of the of the physiotherapies that I know, we all become osteopaths. It's it's kind of a path that we follow um, <clears throat> because we find out that when we finish physiotherapy, we have no enough knowledge. No, well, we always have this feeling we have never enough knowledge about things. But osteopathy gives you a different perspective of of how how, how to treat the body, not just from the physical aspect and the and the movement and the physiology, but it goes a little bit deeper into into the 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 whole uh, holistic uh, um, aspect of the emotional body and the uh, subtle body, and the physical body, of course, the genetics, and also involving food and supplementation into the into the technique. So all my life I've been uh, dancing. I started dancing ballet when I was 14 years old. So I also fell into the Pilates world when everything was uh, starting. Um, I dedicated my life to dance for quite a while. I mean, while I was studying. So I've, I've, since the beginning, I was been so much related with movement. Um, so as far as I was always moving a lot, um, I was wondering also how does the body move inside? No, because yeah, I, I, we all understand how does the biceps contracts and they flex the elbow, how how the back bends back and forth, how it twists this and everything. But when we are talking about how 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 the body moves inside and how this affects us, um, that, that that that's where it really. Um, a yoga opened my mind after after a few years of working with osteopathy and pilates and, and physiotherapy and food and everything i fell into yoga i fell in love with yoga um yeah and i realized where um the body is really moving in very very subtle ways and all these little ways and little details are really affecting our nature our reality our biology our behavior our mood and and yes in in in, in osteopathy as you know we have this concept of the craniosacral osteopathy that we listen to the occipital and the movements of the skull um, and the movements of the sacrum with the pelvis and how they do what we call flexion and extension, how the liquid goes up and down through the spine. Um, uh, so for, for, for an osteopath that starts practicing yoga and starts realizing what's going on in the yoga philosophy, how much they talk about this, this energy that flows from, from uh, the lower uh, part of the spine to the highest, or higher levels of the spine, it was inevitable to relate um, this movement of this uh, liquid, you know, this Kundalini energy with the cerebrospinal liquid. Um, but at the same time, as, uh, as I was coming from the uh, physical aspect of health, I wanted to relate it, to relate it with movement. It's like, okay, so how is this liquid really moving? And why is it moving? And how is it moving? And how can we make it move voluntarily if now it's very much mainstream to talk about how much we can control our autonomous 
uh, system. No? Um, so that's when I end up finding you and talking about um, the components of the cerebrospinal liquid. And in the PhD that I'm doing about uh, functional medicine, that it's talking also a lot about in the endocrine system, um, we were talking about how the hormones travel uh, through the different axes and how the hypothesis is related with the, the super renals or with the gonads or with the mammal glands or, or with the tyro. Um, so I was wondering, wow, maybe this way, all these practices, all these yoga practices, all these Buddhist practices, all these new methods, what they are really doing besides moving blood and oxygen, they're also moving the liquid in itself. Because as you have confirmed, there is no much uh, literature about the liquid in itself. There is no much uh, discovered yet. And I didn't know there was so little. Um, so when you get into the into the physical practice of the pranayamas and the bandhas. And, yeah, and the asana as well. Then you realize, well, maybe this practice is not just, it's not just an, such an, an external practice for the body and for also for the concentration, but it's also for something as subtle as liquid that is right in the middle of the body that is surrounded, surrounded by a lot of tissues and that we can literally make these tissues be compressed and squeeze and sack and, and support. And this is where the, my wonder about, okay, how do we do this? How are we doing this with the pranayamas? How are we doing this, this with the bandas? And how, why do we feel so, so uh, fresh or bright or awake or concentrated or focused and calm when we do this practice. You know? So yeah, so from the move from the moving background to the to the subtle aspects of the cerebrospinal liquid and how we can voluntarily uh, make the liquid as ascend you know, as many religions. The religion says as send, send up to the higher levels of consciousness and awareness. How how we this how, how can we anatomize anatomize? How can we define the different practices and what are they doing inside of our body? How does the pelvic floor affects? How does the inguinal area affects? How does the um, abdomen and, 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 the, and the pressure of the abdomen when we are breathing, not only the abdomen is expanding, but is also pressuring towards the inside. Same thing with the lungs, the same thing with the diaphragm, the same thing with the larynx and the same thing with the glottis. So like every time we breathe, we are not just expanding to make more space towards the outside, but also the lungs are looking for space towards the inside. And we also do different movements with the diaphragm that we can actually control voluntarily to make the diaphragm, expand, the, the rib case expand more, but also compress more towards the middle of the spine, towards the spine itself, towards the middle of the body. Um, so yeah, it gets, it gets very, very interesting. And then of course, when I ask you, like if it makes some, any sense, and I asked to you, you say, it does make a lot of sense. And I was actually talking to other, to other uh, colleagues, which are engineers, just asking is, if physically is, is this, does it make any sense? I mean, I'm saying something very absurd. There's like, can we do this if we squeeze here with this muscle and we uh, twist here with these other muscles and we suck it up with these methods, you no? Know? And, and he was like, yeah, it makes total sense for me. As an engineer, it was making sense for him. It was making sense for a person who was interested about cerebrospinal liquid. So here I am, just uh, 
so wonder and so uh, inspired uh, also of talking to you about all these aspects. I have a, uh, a, a perpetual smile on my face uh, when I talk to you because uh, it seems like you're, uh, you're connecting so many aspects of this of this work from uh from movement to nutrition to breathing to uh you know asanas um and and i came to the cerebrospinal fluid not from a from a from a yogic uh tradition and so it's amazing the blending of all these traditions that you're putting together not only physical therapy right being a physical therapist and an osteopath um, and knowing the anatomy so well, but also having the practices that you have um, from, you know, a, these, these, these ancient traditions and, and, and really kind of thinking about it from that perspective, and yet also having the real life experience and the little, like you said, like the subtle movements, right? Being able to tap into the subtle movements and being aware of those and noticing them and asking the question, oh, what? what is this? Um, is it tissue? Is it fascia? Is it fluid? Is it something else? Right. And, and since you have all this experience, not only physical therapy, working with people, osteopath palpating and, and feeling and touching, right. Developing your skills of palpation and, and, and sensory input, uh, but also your own uh, awareness of, 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 of things that are moving. Um, and so I'm curious, we obviously contacted because of the cerebrospinal fluid and some of the, um, your own questions about it. Could this be that I'm bringing up this fluid, right? Um, what, wh what, what is this fluid? What is it doing in your experience? And first I want to kind of get into your experience of like what the fluid does. And then I'd like to get into, uh, you obviously have a mastery of your body and, you know, I'm curious using the practices that you, that you use, um, how do you feel like you have worked with the fluid and how do you feel like you have actually, you know, been able to, for instance, activate or or sort of tap into the fluid that's down in the sacrum and like you say, bring it up to different points and you say bandhas, if you can explain kind of what that is and also energetically and also physically with this fluid, bringing it up and what you do with the bandhas in terms of what you can do to to help maintain the fluid so that it it, it rises um so i know that's a lot but if you know <laughs> first you're sort of your your direct experience of the fluid and then how you've kind of learned to work with it uh in all your practices in terms of what you're doing and and then physiologically you know and anatomically what you're sensing with your um with your own with your own experience yeah that's 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 a lot um but but one that one thing that you just mentioned and it's very important is that is that we have our own practice that we develop our own way to observe what's happening in our body and this is this is where this is why I think yoga is in general and all these techniques are really taking off in the last years because people that are into the medical field are starting to practice. It's not that just we hear about it or we read about it or oh, this is the theory about it. Uh, yeah, that's very interesting. But if you don't feel it inside, it's very hard to explain. Um, so the way the way uh, the way I feel it in my own experience. It's it's um, uh, I, I'm lucky because I've been I've been in many different physical practice during my life. So I I I, I also know when when I'm dancing a kind of 
contemporary dance or a kind of, 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 of contemporary dance. The, like different contemporary dance have different techniques, therefore you have a different experience, therefore you have a different way of movement. It's a different texture, it's a different way. So the same thing with this, you cannot expect to, 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 to look outside of you and say, wow, this is like changing my body. It's, that it's not, it's changing your, your perception of how you feel, how you breathe, how your heart is beating, um, how, how uh, sensitive you are, how um, awake you are, uh, how patient you are. Um, so it's, it's the, the practice in itself turns into, into a, for, for me, into a richer experience of life. So what I do physically is definitely practice a lot. And even since the first time we talk till today, in my own practice, in my, in my, in my personal practice, I have discovered and I have also like uh, gone deeper and into the understanding of what is already there the, in the practice and that I was doing it I don't want to say wrong, but I was doing it in, in a different way that it was supposed to be done. So now I kind of really understand, okay, that's how I can hold the strength every time I inhale and I put all the air inside of my lungs, then the diaphragm has to go down. So it goes down. So the lungs have more space and it pulls no, from the pleura and it, it brings more air inside. The same thing in your rib cage, they, they also pull out. So they, so they also, the, the, the lungs also expand to the sides and to the front. And also the heart is in, is in there. So every time you inhale, you're putting some pressure in your heart. Likely you are bringing your diaphragm down. So you have more space also for the, for the heart to beat more comfortable. But then you have to think about all the pressure that we do with the diaphragm every time we deep, do a deep inhale and we push down all the, all the organs. We push down the large and the small intestines and the stomach and, and, uh, and, uh, and the bladder and everything that is inside of the abdomen and inside of the pelvis is being pushed, literally pushed down towards the pelvic floor, towards the perineum. And the perineum is, in, if you're a healthy person, if you are not an elderly person who has a problem with uh, the retention of the urine or, 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 or you need to go to the, to train your pelvic floor, no? But for a healthy person, when you have this activity in your pelvic floor and you're pushing from the top with the diaphragm and you compress there, obviously, where is, where is something that you're gonna compress if you compress it from top and you compress it from underneath all these organs, all these visceras, you push it, where is it gonna go? Yeah, it's gonna go to the sides. It's gonna go to the front and to the back. But what do you have there? Wow, you have amazing muscles there. You have the obliques. You have muscles going this way. You have muscles going this way. You have muscles coming this way. You have muscles coming this way. And then on the back as well is a whole interlace, a whole net of muscles supporting everything from different um, vectors of forces. The only thing you're doing is just you're compressing the energy down and then you're sending it up. You're compressing and then you're letting it expand and you and suck it up, compress it and suck it up, compress it and suck it up. So, what I have realized in my personal practice, when you look into the, into the yogi philosophy, is that there is, there is a concept that is called linga. The linga of, is, a, is a very spiritual um, object. And the linga has the shape of a trunk. So when I teach yoga, for example, for my students, I always tell them that there is no arms and there is no legs in the yoga practice. Everything is from here to the pelvic floor. And everything, everything is just stays in there. The arm, the leg, you can put it wherever you want, is all about this and the support and what is in between. 
and that is that is a linga. We can talk in a different in a different uh, interview about what a linga is and how a linga is even related to uh, uh, different um, um, objects of uh, uh, like galaxies. They do move in the same way. It's a very very specific shape for energy to 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 move is is a, is a very very interesting aspect of the yogic philosophy but as you know he has a lot of metaphysics he has a very very deep understanding of the human nature so yeah the practice is has to be very personal the practice is very personal now we really have to make the people understand what is the anatomy, what is the physiology, and then what is the practice, what is the experience for the people to gradually understand, okay, this is the map, all right, from, I can go from this city to this city, okay, I know the theory, now I'm gonna, I'm, now I'm gonna do the experience, I'm gonna do the trip, I'm gonna start feeling it inside. And it takes a while. It literally takes a while to 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 understand um, to to feel the changes. Like one day is like a domino, uh, no, like a domino uh, thing. Is like oh, pack, oh, it is one piece. One piece just makes the rest go. Bah, 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 bah. Oh, right, that was the that was the little piece that I needed to move. Yeah. So what's your um? What is your experience when you uh, when you bring your awareness to your cerebrospinal fluid, this liquid? It's a lot. What is the purpose? As I always tell people in my classes or what my patients is like, OK, you come here, but what is your purpose? Like, what do you mean? It's like, I don't want pain. Is your patient? OK, that's a good purpose. You don't want pain. Okay, You come to your classes. What is your purpose? Like, what do you mean? It's like, yeah, you came here because you want to get uh, be more calm you want to be more focused you want to get rid of your ex you want to be more self-confident you want to have more self-love you want to be more more um, tolerant whatever the purpose is i really i really believe that that the liquid is literally grabbing from from the stomach is grabbing from the gonads is grabbing from the from the food is grabbing from the water is is grabbing from your for, from your experience, from your feelings, it's wrapping from, from the way you talk, the sounds you make, and all these different aspects are just creating a good quality liquid. The better the liquid is, the better the quality is, the more you take care of it, then you can do whatever you want with this experience. What I mean with this is that it's not that you, you're just going to be like super energized and you're going to be ready for everything. You might, you might want to be Super calm, super focused. <laughs> you know, I know I, I don't know if, if you understand what I mean with this. It's like your own will. You are the one who rules the air that comes inside of you every single breath. You are the one who keeps it inside. You are the one who puts it out. If you manage that, it's a life change. Um, so the, the, the experience is what what you what you want to experience is what you want to approach. Is your what we call in yoga your sankalpa. The sankalpa is the intention of your practice. What is the purpose of your classes? Don't let the practice just be a bunch of stretching exercises because it's not that. It's an understanding of how the physiology of your body and how you can manage your own mood and balance your own senses that's beautiful mm. um you mentioned uh bandhas uh in the past i'm just curious if you can um define them in some way and what they uh are used for and how you see them related to the fluid yeah and 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 i just because i have to teach in four minutes so i'm gonna give you like a two minutes uh, <laughs> i'm so i'm sorry that's why i told you like before be I the, it'll be the tease for the next uh, session yeah so. it's, it's, a little, it's a little introduction yeah. <laughs> so, 
And I really think it helps a lot to talk about this and, and, and you and I just also like sharing some questions, some, some doubts that I do have a lot about liquid. Um, Bandas, very, very quick, they call it the energy locks. It's, 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 it's a part of your body where you can just literally lock, close and open at your own will. And what I mean with this, let's say, for example, is like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lock my biceps in, in, in a, in a, in a um, concentric contraction and just hold it here. So what I have here, the more I, the more I tight it, the more I hold it here and the more resistance that I have, the more blood I send. More blood, more blood, more liquid, more liquid, more liquid. Good. So kind of the same thing is this, um, you lock the energy from the pelvic floor. That means that through your pelvic floor, and I'm talking about the anterior and the posterior part, I'm talking about the genitals and I'm talking about the rectus of the anus. Um, well, this is very easy to understand. Everything goes down through that, right? The water, the air, the, the food, everything goes down there. So if you lock it, you hold it. Is it is an energy lock? And is water? Is food? Is air? Is is energy? It's like there's no cuckoo thing here. It's just energy going down. You lock it. You hold it. <laughs> for how long? I don't recommend you to hold it for how, for too long. You better to have it empty, empty stomach, empty stomach for the practice. But is an energy lock. The other energy lock that is called mula vanda. Mula vanda. That it, it's the same thing that. Uh, uh, Muladhara chakra, the first chakra, first level. Then you have Yuriana Vanda, which is the diaphragm. Also, a way to lock it. You inhale, what do you do? You contract it and you lock it. Boom, you lock it. Boom. You squeeze everything towards your stomach. That's why I decided, that I, I find out that that's why Buddha had a big stomach here. It has this big thing here. No? It's just energy, just bring, hold it there. No? <laughs> and then and then the same energy you can send it up to the lungs and to the rib cage so from from down here you can just send it up here and and lock it in between the diaphragm and the glottis right and then so what do you do when 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 you block energy what happens more energy accumulates more energy accumulates when you stop when, when you go to, to Vegas and you go to the uh, Hoover Dam, Hoover Dam, right? But Hoover Dam, what is it? It's holding water, holding water, holding water. Okay, open the water. <laughs> energy is coming out. The more energy that you show, hold, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now open it. <laughs> Send the liquid up. <laughs> it is. <laughs> No, it is like that. It is literally like that. It's so fantastic. This 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 machine is amazing. I can feel it. I can feel it. It's like, uh, wee! It's like, uh, it's like a uh, a geyser, right? Um, yeah. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Ever flowing. A geyser. Yeah. A geyser. I like that image. I love that image. A geyser. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, be... uh, this is a the, we continue this. Yes, okay? please. The guys yes, are please. in the next one. Uh, yes. Thank you, Fernando, for uh, for, you, for your time. Uh, excellent. Uh, I just want to continue this conversation, this dialogue, and please. see the 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 um, you know the authenticity, the 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 naturalness of it, right? The mm. flow um, yeah. and the questions, right? What's not what's not yet known, but we're we're, we're, we're investigating with ourselves, right? Yeah. We're creating our own practices and we're investigating with ourselves. So thank you very much for your time. Greatly appreciated. You, much love. Yes. Let's uh, keep in touch and okay. uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.